And here we are back again. So we just checked and it was May since you were last on. So life with fisticuffs fame, how are you holding up? Are you getting stopped in the streets as always? I <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, obviously, it's been a crazy year for everyone. So to be honest, I'm just glad that I'm still here. I think we all have to be grateful that we made it through so far. <laughs> I mean, this is it being so, I don't know. People get so like complacent with being grateful for stuff. When it happens there and then you're like, yeah, I'm grateful. But no, it's genuinely. There are people in such worse situations, but to have that kind of awareness that, you know, yeah. this is so important. But yeah, how have you been holding up anyway? Because again, you went over there in Birmingham in the first place, sort of training full time and everything else. How's your training been at the minute? It's been okay. Um, uh, the first lockdown, my training was to be honest, awesome, considering that majority of the time I was training on my own. So the last time you had me on, my training was amazing. Like I was getting so much out of it, even though I'm on my own and stuff. And then the second lockdown came and I think everyone felt it a bit more, like not so much motivation, you know, you're having to push yourself a bit more. Also, the weather was so much more crap this time. So training outside is, you know, it's almost impossible. Um but yeah, this time around, my training wasn't as great. You know, recently I've just been managing to get back into some regular sessions because I was just having to work. Like as much as fighting's great, training's great, and I'll make, you know, try and always make time for it. It doesn't pay my bills at the moment. And, you know, lockdown and COVID doesn't either. So any opportunity to work, I'm just having to take the hours. I can't be picky about whether it clashes with my training or something. Um, so I was trying to do the best I could but like I said just the last couple you know like two weeks to a month I've managed to get some regular training going again schedules this is kind of the bigger sort of thing in itself because again like first time first lockdown I remember seeing you on the Instagram and you're in like a park wearing shin guards with your tracksuit bombs just standing there with inspiring people <laughs> like running around a track and stuff thinking, fair fucking play like I couldn't be able to do that one I didn't have a training part all the motivation but you know crack on fair play with that but again with that in itself I mean this is the harsh reality of when there aren't the options to have this sort of sustainable life when COVID ha hits, for example, because as much as everyone's sort of slating, everyone else saying, you know, uh, re retrain, reschedule this sort of stuff, you know, don't follow your passion, you can't afford it. It's a bit harsh because it's kind of true at the minute. Because again, as much as you don't want to have to do that, it's all well and good to say, I've got my integrity, I've got my fighting, but you know, I haven't got food on the table. Now what? So it, it's, exactly. been a, it's quite a hard thing to sort of face. So regards of where MMA is to you now, obviously in the current world, is it, in your focus at all are you still training at all is it something on your radar to get back to urgently is it whenever the time comes where's your head with MMA at the minute it's still in my focus and I'm I'm still training it's just for a few months I had to make a few other things a priority which I think is fine and at first it I was kind of getting really stressed about it thinking oh you know I'm I'm flopping basically I'm failing you know it's not good but at the same time I had to tell myself you know I, well I'm 22 now but I was only 21 and I have so much time you know three months if I think you know I've been training for like seven years and I barely missed a week you know three months just to get myself back on track you know make sure I can pay for my bills I live on my own I'm not as lucky as a lot of people who they live with their families or whatever situation they're in you know I'm one of those people I'm paying for everything myself and I love fighting, but it can cost you a lot of money and it's a lot of time and I have to work to be able to afford to survive. And like I said, I'm just grateful that I'm making it through the year. You know, a lot of people haven't. I've had COVID twice now <laughs> and I'm still going. So I'm just grateful for that. I can make up the hours when, you know, I'm back on track with work. But like I said, I'm getting back into it now. I'm getting a better routine. By like the way, you explain that as well. Obviously, the amount of years you put in the sport and then taking that time off. Because again, when you're in that time off, it's quite hard to see the bigger scale of, oh, I've got X amount of years ahead of me. These couple months layoff, do a sorting life advent out, doesn't seem as daunting now. Again, having that perspective, there's yeah. a lot of maturity, really. Yeah. I I just had to think of it this way. Like it was it was getting me down at first. Like I felt I was starting to feel like everyone's looking at me thinking, oh, you've given up. And I had a lot of people messaging me saying, oh, you've given up, you've stopped. You know, it's also the fact of just because somebody isn't posting something online doesn't mean it's not happening. 
it's even now like I've been going back to the you know I've been going back to my training and stuff and I am managing to do some sessions and things but I'm not posting it because one you know we shouldn't be posting videos of my training <laughs> I hope no one from the government's watching this no one's watching don't worry well hopefully someone's watching hopefully no one like you know yeah. well hopefully they aren't. no one officials watching. no no one from the government yeah That's it. but there's no pre-covid talk you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm also can't be one of those people who didn't go training for like a few months and then as soon as they go back to one session be posting every video <laughs> like people will be yeah. thinking wow you went you went back for one class okay we get it's it. a busy big class <laughs> it's a bit busy class <laughs> but this is a huge concept in itself a new factor in the world of training and fighting in itself is the social media presence that it's not just you're an athlete training for a fight. Now you're this fitness influencer, you're this model, or whatever you want to call it, whatever thing you you become a brand. And then that becomes exhausting. Cause again, like the yeah. post the post training pitch is all a bit of fun, you know, try and get the light and right, all this sort of stuff. That's fine. Again, people <laughs> kicking videos, you're hitting pads, yeah, it's all fine. But when you're spending that much time and doing that side of things, what what point is your fighting focused on? Like because again, you've got quite a I don't know, you've been very consistent with your Instagram, you've always been quite good with social media. Like how have you found that like, managing that when it came to training, when you were training like full on anyway, was that quite, a, I don't know, an obstacle? Was it something you didn't mind? How did you manage that? I think it's different for everyone, but me personally, I really like it. I think it's good for some fighters because, you know, we spend so much time at the gym and a lot of the time, like me, I don't get to see my family very much. And most of my friends, they're at the gym but it almost gives you a bit of so like socialization. Mm. <laughs> like I get to post and I get to talk to people who were doing the same thing as me. And I don't know. I just enjoy it. I guess it's almost like a side hobby, how I see it. I enjoy not just for my fighting, but I am a girl. Like I like clothes. I like makeup. Like, so I like to even like put makeup on and just go out and take a photo or something. It's half of it's, I like to keep people updated with my fighting and half of it's kind of for me, like I enjoy it. I mean, this is a thing in itself with the identity sort of thing in itself. Cause again, when you go to training regularly, training full time, it's most of the time in gym clothes, you're a bit sweaty, you're a bit spotty, whatever else. Again, you're just living a fighter's life and it's pretty miserable and not the prettiest, but then you get a chance to, you know, clean up a little bit and you spend a bit of time, you know, cause again, I don't want to say feminine, this sort of thing in a sense, but again, a bit of self love and a bit of self, a bit of you know effort in your appearance and emphasis on that as well because again it's not something you're that's going to be your priority when you've got a fight coming up but when you get that time to appreciate you know this is how i look when i make an effort and then you can actually you yeah know, this is how i want to represent myself albeit you know social media likes on the rest of it, it's fairly ambiguous numbers but for yourself because obviously there's there's been a few changes since our last conversation which we you know heard quite a few comments about <laughs> which is a thing <laughs> <laughs> but in the sense of the identity itself like where did you feel your identity was who was sophie luxton the mma fighter is that still who you are now is that something that's just a bit of a, a passion of yours is it a hobby what, what does it mean to you at this point it still means the exact same to me as it did you know the last time we spoke Obviously, a lot of things have changed. It's hard. It's a little bit harder right now to um, keep your eyes on, you know, your goal. Like my goal at the moment is just to make sure I'm still training, make sure that I'm still improving. Like I, I can't have in my mind a date when I'm next going to fight because nobody really knows. Like you can say, oh, there's a show on in April, but it's, it's probably going to get cancelled. And then, you know. That's the only thing that's really changed for me. Obviously, a lot of things have changed in my own life, but nothing has changed about my fighting. Obviously, a lot of people... I, I've been posting more things about, you know, my personal life, clothes, fashion, makeup, whatever, but I'm still training, and that's still a big focus for me. It's just that's not what I'm choosing to post online at the moment. That's not because I like it any less. It's just because... You know, I'm not going to the gym and taking photos and videos of myself. <laughs> I mean, you'd be amazed about people who train and don't post anything. I don't know how they exist. I don't know if they even exist. <laughs> <laughs> like people over like 30, you don't post on Instagram anymore. I don't know what it is. I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, I think I've seen your dad train quite a lot. I don't think he's posted on Instagram once, but oh I'll no, let him... <laughs> I'll let him crack on. <laughs> my dad's my dad's been training longer than I have. Where's like he's been doing it longer than me. I think he's appeared on the web like five times. <laughs> You've already he's probably going to well. listen to this. <laughs> Shout out, big man! Like, right now, he's somewhere walking around with a tinfoil hat on, like. <laughs> But ironically, he's probably a lot happier than most people are. So, you know, I'll yeah. <laughs> let him crack on he's quite He's in his own world. <laughs> I mean, that's the dream. Now, obviously, when it comes to being quite a, I don't know, you, you express quite yourself on social media. Obviously, your, your makeup and everything else, you want to show yourself off in that sense. How does it feel when, obviously, you make a certain <laughs> changes to certain facts, like certain appearance changes, and you get comments? How are you inclined to then continue posting organically who you are and who you want to represent? Because in the same breath, when you get people asking questions they haven't got, you know, a point to ask, how do you feel still being able to represent yourself as honestly as you want to when you get these sort of, I don't know. I don't but know, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say it because it's a bit general, but you know. <laughs> it's, you know, I, if I'm completely honest, I really don't care. <laughs> Um, I've always been someone to do what I want for me. Like even all my decisions I make in life, I never think about how other people are going to react to it. In my brain, it's just like, I used to, but I don't know what changed for me, but whenever I make a decision, it's never like, oh, what is someone going to think of it? Or what will people say? It's just like, no, I'm going to, I want to do that. So I'm going to do it. Um, and I, you know, when I post something online, I'm not post, you know, I want people to see what I post and I don't want them to think I'm a bad person or anything. Obviously I care in that sense, what people think of me, but my opinion of myself is more important than anyone else's really. And if I feel like I'm representing the true me and that's not a bad person, then I don't really know what else I can do. Really. It's just people's opinions and that's not facts. So <laughs> A very important thing the way you've said that as well because again there's this whole thing about it's better to be loved by a few and hated by most than liked by a a, 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 a crowd because this is the whole thing if you put the standard fight pictures but you just do what most people do including me i'm posting old fight pictures up during lockdown and this is all i do this is me i just train i fight that's not accurate to who you are inside this is not who you are you know at the moment who you will be down the line that is something who you feel would be be liked Whereas now you'll get love, but you also get hate. But again, you get organic. You get people showing their true colors in that sense. Like, what did you say? I mean, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a, a Roddy Rich song lyric. Yeah, he'd rather be judged by twelve than carried by six. So he'd rather be judged by twelve people than care so much about what people think and be carried away. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't always gonna quote Roddy Rich, but you took the words out of my mouth. I think that's what I was getting at. <laughs> <laughs> something out the box as well but i don't understand these concepts so i'm gonna let, let him crack on with that he's quite good with those <laughs> but anyway we're gonna ignore how white i am and not my un- <laughs> depth for this but we'll crack on we move <laughs> but <laughs> when are we gonna go with this i forgot but yeah the I'm whole just idea i'm glad you didn't say who's roddy rich <laughs> <laughs> i know i know his work to an extent <laughs> and the more well spoken i say it the, the more obscure it sounds but here we are we move we move um what, what was on but yeah the whole thing about being that integrity of yourself and again it's on paper it's very easy to say because again as much as you're coming across very natural very confident everything else i take it it hasn't been a very straightforward as that that okay i just don't care full stop that's it like very much okay switch, emotion switch turn that off <laughs> like initially like how how have you found managing this obviously not caring now is all well and good but obviously it takes a while to develop that layer of i don't know confidence in yourself that doesn't bother you because again it's not that you care less but you're more confident than it will bother you if you see what I mean does that make sense Marat saying that yeah 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 yeah. I I think you know it's just over time I think a lot of people struggle with worrying about what people think of them um my the angle for me is slightly different so all, always all my life my, you know my fam, my mom even used to say to this you're just one of those people people either love you or they hate you, you know? <laughs> and I think it's Excuse because <laughs> I think it's because I'm like a bubbly happy person 
you know people either they embrace it and you know they get along with me or people are like why why are you so happy or even you know even jealous of the fact that I am happy to just be who I am you know and I know well you know most teenagers they have a bit of a a riff where they struggle with their identity a bit that you know they're worrying a lot about I, I went through that you know I always worrying about what people think down a lot um but now I don't care about what people think of my personality. I care more about if people know who I really am. You know, that's one of my worries online is people see things and I worry that they're not seeing it from the same place that I am. Being so mis- when being I post misrepresented, yeah, am I right saying that? Yeah, like people not understanding truly who I am and taking things from a different angle. That's what I worry about more because I feel like if people really know who I am, then then they will like me because I don't really do anything with bad intentions or, you know, even, you know, months ago when I used to post things online, like a lot of people used to judge me. for. People will always judge you. You have to accept that. You know, people were judging me six months ago. People will judge me now. You know, I can't help that. But the only thing you can do is just be yourself because people, they're going to say something either way. I mean, you may as well be happy in yourself. You rather them <laughs> judging for something you actually agree with than something you don't. Yeah. <laughs> this is you may as well be judged for the person you really are than for somebody who you're creating and making up and who's fake. Because what's the point in that? <laughs> but again, as much as we're saying this very much now, very flippantly and very, oh, this is obvious, isn't it? But it's a very personal journey for some people. They don't appreciate what that really means. And yeah. the reason why this is so impactful for no one who appreciates the bigger picture of this, it's the transition and the organic and the, the difference because again like you're posting a variety of things you go from mma stuff to you know dressed up and again like pictures of your ass out to now you know <laughs> the hijab and everything else it's very polarizing sort of like ways you're representing yourself but again it's how you're felt at that moment in time this is who you are but to have that kind of integrity that every time i do this this is for me this is who i am but this is where this gets quite interesting. So you put a thing up. This is a trendy thing up young people do. I don't know how it works. It's assumptions on Instagram. I don't know what. So what sort of things do you tend to get in those normally? Because what do you, you expect to get versus what you actually got? For the same stuff you're talk, couple talking about. I was pleasantly surprised today when I put that up um, because a lot of the engagement I've been getting recently on my Instagram is all just people asking me the same thing, you know. Oh, you know, some people, I have to appreciate and be open-minded to the fact that some people are genuinely interested and they want to learn. Some people, they're not coming from a nice place, but either way, majority of responses on my Instagram at the moment are, oh, you're Muslim. Oh, you reverted. Why did you do that? You know, people assuming reasons why I did it. Uh, you know all different things like this but I was pleasantly surprised I think out of all the responses I got like three or four people who said that and all of the rest of them were nice you know just asking me general questions about my life or you know nice things I like the random ones I don't really like deep stuff on there I'd rather someone ask me like you know like what's your favorite pack of crisps or something and what is it (laughs) (laughs) What is your favorite pack of crisps? Uh, probably Doritos. I don't know. I eat so many. <laughs> this is it. But, you know, I I prefer stuff like that. But I was surprised today. I, I did expect there to be a lot more. Um, and there wasn't, which was nice. <laughs> so regards of obviously the transition, and again, we've sort of t- touched on this briefly. Obviously, there's certain philosophies people will follow to certain degrees. But again, there's varying elements of these sort of things. And to then go from... I don't know, were you quite religious prior to converting to Islam? No, but, you know, I'll go back to what I said. A lot of people, they ask me what is the reason or more like they think that it was because of a person or, you know, like somebody convinced me or pushed me into it. I was never really religious before, but the truth is, is, you know, I didn't know anything about religion. You know, when we're at school, we learn vaguely about it, but it's always from like an outsider's point of view. You're never like in it and learning about it. Um, And before I moved to Birmingham, 
I really knew nothing about culture at all. Like I've always been very white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lived in very white places and I did grow up in a city that was quite multicultural, but I was so young and I went to school mm. with, you know, mostly white children. And so I didn't ever really learn about culture. And I think that's the same for a lot of a lot of British people. But moving to Birmingham, you can't escape the culture. You know, there's people from every country in the world. Like I can go out now and eat any food from any country in the world. Anything you think of, countries you think you never even heard of, you can just go 10 minutes down the road and, and eat the food from the country. You know, and the same with the people. You know, before I moved here, I couldn't look at someone from a different country and know where they're from. You know, uh, to me, they're just brown, black, you know, white. <laughs> you haven't got specifics, <laughs> yeah, it's like very it. general sort of thing. But um, moving here and learning about so much culture, it, it just interested me. And then I just started to learn more. I'm, I'm a, the type of person I like to learn anything I don't know, I want to know, you know, and I, I'm accepting of the fact that I don't know a lot. So I want to learn everything and just learning about it. And I started to get a lot of friends who are Muslim um, from all different countries and cultures. And I just loved it so much. Like uh, there's a lot of people who I know won't understand it because they're, you know, it's either not for them, which is fine, or they, they don't really know anything about it, which is also fine. But for me, it, it all just kind of made sense even though I hadn't been religious before, like everything just kind of made sense. And I almost had peace with the fact that, yeah, th this is this is right to me. And at the end of the day, it makes me happy. So I don't really understand why people seem might have a problem because if it makes me happy and it doesn't affect them, then I don't understand why they can be negative. But, you know, each to their own. I accept that some people are going to be like that. It's fine. <laughs> I feel a lot of it is that difference between naivety and ignorance. Because again, you were saying they're like quite naive. You don't you don't understand the culture. You don't know it. But that wasn't you not wanting to know. You've not been around it. Whereas some people are very much like, okay, that's not you know, <laughs> like saying that I'm I'm white. That's not white. That's not me. <laughs> Full stop. Yeah. I can't learn anything from there. I can't enjoy the food. I can't enjoy the people. They got nothing in common. We don't you know like the same things alien whereas you know like a normal sane person like yourself comes in and says okay this is someone they've got different beliefs different background let's find out you know what they believe and what they do and lo and behold <laughs> it's actually things that people can like and actually enjoy <laughs> i think a lot of the negative opinions is not necessarily people's fault because you know these people who don't know anything about it what's presented to them in the media is all negativity in the majority, you know, a lot of the time, things about Islam is negative. So they have no opinion on it. And then what's presented to them is bad. So they just assume, oh, it's bad, you know, but it's, I wouldn't, you know, not everyone's ignorant. Some people are just at, at fault of false media. Um, and I think if they looked into it or even knew some people from, they would understand it's, it's such a beautiful religion and it's they're so kind, like the people are so kind. So regards of how it affects your day to day now, then. so religion to me prior to I don't know, this moment in time has been fairly default by default. I think my family's Jewish, so I am Jewish by default. Don't practice. Do you say it, I think I think but this is this is kind of my point. Literally, like it's more of a formality. It's like, OK, it turns out oh, your star signs is so you're from this place, your origins is so we don't practice it. It's not really much in the forefront. It's like I was uh, christened Catholic, but I never practiced it mm. ever. So that's kind of my point. So my day-to-day -day regards of Jewish activities or in Christian activities are fairly null and void. My bacon sandwich was lovely this morning. Thanks for asking. But <laughs> regards of um, your practice now, how does how much of in your life is that now? Is it quite a frequent thing? Is it a very regular thing? So you pray quite frequently, don't you, for um, Islam, for right saying? Yeah, but you know what it is? Um, this is another thing that I think is really important for people to understand is that it's not like a tick list of what you have to do to become a Muslim. I remember when I first was, you know, because for a long time I was thinking about it, I was learning. And then when I really decided I want to do this, I was very stressed. I was worried because I'm thinking there's so much for me to learn. And I just, I'm worrying that I'm, I'm, I'm not a proper Muslim, you know, <laughs> if I don't know all of these things. 
And um, a few people came to me and they said, look, it, it's, it's not like rules, it's a journey. So, and it's everything about in Islam is about intention. So it's about your intentions. If your intentions are good, then that's, that's really, that's enough, you know. And if you're trying, so uh, yeah, there's five prayers a day for Salah. Um, I'm not doing all, you know, my prayers yet because I haven't learned it. There's a lot of words. It's all in Arabic. I want to understand it all and learn it all before I'm praying. But um, even if you just stood there and thought for a few minutes, if you don't know it, that's enough. Like you're making your intention is to do something. Um, but yeah, there's five prayers a day at the moment. I'm not doing them, but I'm learning them. Um, other, you know, it doesn't really affect my day to day too much. It's more of like a way of life. So like good intentions with things that you do. Obviously I eat halal. I can eat anything I want. You know, majority of things I can get halal. Um, you, people probably see on my Instagram, I'm still eating massive burgers with cheese on them and, <laughs> and chips and <laughs> like all the same food. Um, and I'm lucky in Birmingham, you know, I can get everything, mm. you know, um, but no, it's made me a better person because in previous situations, maybe I will get angry or, you know, I will want to get revenge on someone for doing something to me or I don't really feel like that now. I feel like, well, that's, you know, that's their bad problem. That's a them problem. You know, as long as I'm coming from a good place, then, and I'm a good person, then good things will come back around to me. So... Bit of a strange question, but obviously you're saying a lot of it's based around intentions and that kind of thing in itself. It's not so much the deliberate action; it's more the the thought behind it, the bigger sort of picture as such. Is your intention with Islam in itself for that sort of guidance for yourself, for that extra sort of okay, I'm on a journey as a collective, albeit religious or not. I need some guidance to help me steer the way I'm going to go. Is it regards to the community in itself that you see these people are practicing a way you feel you want to carry yourself in? Where's your intentions with this? If you see what I mean, it's a bit of a tricky one to ask. I think originally what really made me want to, you know, make the change is that a lot of the morals within the religion were morals I already had. So it was things in my head that I'm, I already believe in, um, and it was more just living through them and just it makes me a better person. And with that, I feel happier because I feel like more, more, I don't know what the word is, you know, like content sort of thing. Yeah, more content with decisions I make and stuff. Um, I don't know. And, and it's a beautiful community as well. Like a lot of my friends, they're Muslim, some of my really, really close friends. And they're so kind you know, even little things that you don't think about, like, we'll always eat together, we won't eat on our own, and they'll always look out for me, you know, like people, the mm. the Muslim community, it's so warming, which I find very nice, because one thing I'm always worrying about is because I'm English, and I'm white, people being like, you're not a real Muslim, but I've had no hate at all from anyone who's Muslim, they're all so welcoming, it's more the English people or you know people outside of the religion that they don't understand it so to because they can't understand it they think it's it's wrong I mean this goes back to I mean it's quite hard to generalize because again Muslim people English people again yeah. it's just spectrum it's quite hard to sort of be that sort of general with it we are generalizing I'm not saying I know it's more just to sort of highlight the point you're making to make sure yeah. people get the again this is this is a point saying with some people the way people the way people will perceive what's being said. And this is kind of the point, though. The people in the circles, again, if I'm wrong, feel free to interrupt. But again, the people in your immediate circles, the Muslim community there, they're very accepting of you making the effort off the bat, if nothing else. The fact you give enough of shit to try and try and get involved as best you can, you know, make it applicable. That's the sort of thing you... This is kind of it. Take it even away from us. Keep it back to MMA for, us for the sake of the podcast. Why not? Like, you take a beginner. <laughs> someone showing up and giving a shit, asking questions and trying. The people who give them any shit, if anyone, isn't the people who are there already training. It's the people who don't try full stop. And this is yeah. this is the rest of it. It's the bigger perspective of the whole thing. So tell you what, this is an interesting one for any other any Muslim athletes training. Training in a hijab, what's that like? Um so at the mo so this is an interesting one. So at the moment, 
I'm training with a Nike jab. Um, it's not necessarily made for MMA, but it does the job. Like maybe I have to stop a few times and sort it because it's not made for grappling. Like it's fine for kickboxing, you know. But if someone, you know, it gets pulled yeah. around a bit, and it's not it's not built for the sport, but it, it's it's making do for the moment. Um, but I actually just had a really amazing brand contact me. Um, hopefully I'll be able to post about it in the next few days. And they actually make, they're, they're an MMA brand who make clothes specifically for girls who train and compete. Um, so this is going to be a lot better for me. It's like, it's like a rash guard with it attached. So it's not going to come off your head if you, mm. you know, if you're grappling and I'm really looking forward to this. And they're such a really good brand. Um, they're doing a lot for women in the sports because that's something that's going to be really important for me as well is that there's not a lot of Muslim girls doing sports. Um, and I think that's a shame, you know, there's nothing in the religion that says women can't do sports or they can't compete or even they can't fight or whatever. It's more of a cultural thing where people don't necessarily like it as much. Um, but I, I hope that, you know obviously my vision is to be going high level with my fighting I hope that some people can see that they can do it as well because I mean I really hope someone can correct me if I'm wrong um, and I really hope I am wrong but I don't think there's any women in really any sports at a high level wearing a hijab and this is kind of why this is I wanted to highlight this as well because where just on face value, nothing else like you're saying there. It's not on the front of such. And when it comes to people like yourself, this is why I wanted to sort of have this conversation on this sort of platform, albeit not the biggest yet, but we're getting there. So people who are <laughs> know it's a possibility, because again, much of a cultural thing, like you're saying there, it's not an option in, in certain places. Whereas now you are someone who is obviously white in a different, you know, from a different background, converted to Islam, embracing the culture of it showing that kind of openness and also in a combat sport so again <laughs> regards to keeping things you know away from adversity i mean you you do quite like it's it a bit of a, i'm a bit of a niche aren't I? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very a very niche avenue but this is like with <laughs> any kind of niche avenue take back to ronda rousey in the ufc but off the bat prime example something you thought women in mma it's not going to be a thing it's, this is a bit of a fact you know <laughs> if, if this can be just as much of an evolution as when I first started fighting, because I was talking to someone about this the other day, and when I we spoke about this last time, I'm sure, when I started fighting, there was no women, you know, you didn't have the opportunity to train. And then it's evolved and now women can fight just as openly as men and, you know, women are headlining shows and everything. If if it can evolve like that for Muslim women, it will be it will be amazing. But, and this is sort of my point, and this is why this conversation, I wanted to have it in this sort of format as well. And that where I came from, and I said this before we started, is a place of I want to know. I'll be hands up honest that I am nosy. I'm a very nosy person, <laughs> but I'm respectfully nosy, like I think. <laughs> you, you're doing the right thing then, you know, <laughs> this job. <laughs> this is kind of the point. It's like I'm speaking to you from a, the people in the DMs and everything else, probably a, hopefully a bit more articulate, but a bit more a case of I want to know. And for anyone who's from a similar situation, you are, maybe they want to convert, maybe they have converted, maybe they don't know, maybe they don't have other options. But seeing someone confidently being themselves, albeit it may not even be the same field, they may not be the same thing, but confidently being yourself, unapologetically being yourself, that is so important. It doesn't matter what you're doing, if you're being honest and authentic. And that's why I think this is why you have, I don't know the growing audience you've got and why it's continuing to expand in that sense that people... They, you can see through bullshit like you know the people who how do i say this politely you know the people who i might like, shoot myself in the foot a bit with this like the people who like you know there's like amateur mma fighting means people think they're in the ufc when they've had like a couple of inter clubs and it's not, it's not me by the way anyone listening but, <laughs> <laughs> but you, get, you get people like that and you can sort of see okay it rubs the wrong way when you see it because you know it's not authentic but the people like yourself who are very much this is me not even take it or leave it such just full stop this is me hi <laughs> nice to meet you. 
<laughs> and what are we doing about your business? Like, not even provocative, because you get people like, oh, take it or leave it, saying, no, just, just have a day off, or don't, don't want to talk to you. I don't care what you believe, it's fucking annoying off the bat. But no, that level of authenticity. But back to, there's a few things with this in itself. So regards of, how did your family sort of accept it off the bat? Because again, obviously, to social media, there are people you can just turn, turn your phone off, it's gone. But regards of coming out to your family, obviously, with the, you know, everything changing in your life, how did, how did they accept it off the you bat? Know, um obviously you just use the words coming out yeah <laughs> you, sorry you know what i mean Expl- no 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 no. i'll i'll explain but for me i never went to my family and said also oh, i'm i i'm thinking i'm gonna you know be a muslim or whatever because to me i don't have to it's the same mm. to me as i don't agree with the fact that gay people have to come out to their parents like straight people don't have to come out to their parents like it's the same mm. thing like i i don't have to go to them and you know i'm just carrying on living my life my way obviously they they ask me questions all from a nice place they i'm i'm lucky in that sense that my my family they never would message me and be like well what are you doing you can't do that or whatever that's my business and they're always supportive in fact i wouldn't say that i'm lucky because in my view this is how all family should be mm. i guess other people are probably unlucky is that they're not going to be accepted in the same way but um also i i still you know i love my family i still have the the view of i don't really care <laughs> you know it, it's true you know i'm always gonna live my life the way i want to and i'm very lucky that i am strong in my mind that i feel this way and i'm able to follow whatever i believe but um no they were completely accepting you know you know i don't know if all my extended family know or whatever but my close family they've um they've been great about it they haven't really asked any questions because you know my mom she asked it you know a few of my family they asked a few questions just because they want to learn about it if it's going to be something in my life. Um, but they didn't want to make me feel, I don't think, like it was a big deal. I mean, and just, go on, go on. just the same, actually, as the lads at the gym who have been a really good, you know, one or two of them asked re- like one question. But um, to be honest, you know, I'm training at um, I'm training at Fearless now. I've been training there for a while, and I love the team there so much. And to be honest, most of them didn't say anything. Even you know, it was a big thing for me. Obviously, I'd posted online I'm wearing a hijab, but it it was a big thing for me to turn up to the gym wearing a hijab because I don't know what anyone's reaction is going to be, and that's like my, you know, that's like my place where I don't want to take my problems or anything. And I walked in no one even said anything you know no one really even double looked or anything it was just like well yeah whatever come on let's train <laughs> and, and that in itself that level of acceptance is what you want and and i'm glad you called me out on that i didn't even re- realize i said about coming out and this is sort of why it's important why that should be sort of flagged and like you said they shouldn't have to come out as such it shouldn't be a oh to, uh, just let you know i've done something wrong this is something i have to let you know about like, oh, i smashed the window back some of the football like it should, it's not <laughs> this isn't a problem but this is why i'm, gl- I'm glad you flagged that because again this is something you say in common parlance like someone come out came out as gay someone came out as a set and the other this is sort of just standard conversation however it shouldn't be like that it should be okay are they they like this they play football they do this oh they're this way they're this inclined they follow this religion or whatever else it's just an attribute it's not so much of a a confession as such but this is sort of the point this is why this is i don't know been a a point of conversation in itself because again these sort of topics and the way they're worded the way it's treated outside of you know people who've got (laughs) respect and dignity aren't always as you know respectful as this and this is sort of the (laughs) point this is being able to have these conversations have even that sort of point in itself that you know this isn't a problem I think that's why I wanted to do this because I think I hadn't said anything online because I was almost thinking that way and a lot of people were asking me questions like they wanted me to come out with some I'm coming out post this is me but I'm not going to do that but I just hope that this conversation answers some people's questions because I'm not going to do this whole post of I'm now a Muslim you know (laughs) because that then becomes a 
it, it changes the intention. Like you said at the start with everything, I saw about intentions and integrity and everything else. And this is sort of the point. If you do, if you're honest with yourself, why, why would you do that sort of post? I'm not saying you are going to, but why would you? You do that so you let people know, you use this, that, and if informative, maybe. Also to sort of stir the pot a little bit. Okay, this is something I know people aren't going to like. I'm going to make a, a thing out of this. However, if you make it, this is who I am. This is how I'm going to live my life. Then you don't need to do that. This is the way people do the like song and dance of, you know, I'm coming back, I'm doing this, that, and the other thing. And all right, are you? Are you just going to get on with it? I haven't seen the gym for months. <laughs> At the end of the day, this is my journey. And as much as it's nice that people are interested in asking me questions, this is something I'm doing for me. And it's a long, you know, it's the journey's never going to end. There's so much to learn. And I don't need the extra pressure of people online. You know, even, I don't know, people say, you're doing this right, you're doing it wrong. Don't you know this? Don't you, you know, I don't need this added pressure onto it I'm just taking my time you know not having the stress I'm on my own this is my own journey <laughs> so with this in itself I've got a bit of a again another sort of strange question with this obviously you found Islam through obviously the culture and everything else appreciating the factors of it and obviously the way you sort of carry yourself and other things like this but what made you want to practice it as well as study it because obviously you could study it independently but then take the step to then you know this is what I want to not just belief also represent my belief as like, what, what was the step that made you want to I don't know commit to it that bit further I guess the easiest answer for me is to say I don't really know <laughs> <laughs> the truthful answer is if, you know I can't think of a moment in my mind where I thought now nah, I, I, I want to you know do it you know and to be honest there's like I was saying earlier there's not really any rules so you know like some Muslims they don't pray, but they're still Muslims. You know, they have the same beliefs, so they don't pray. Or some of the, then they don't wear hijab or they don't go to mosque or, you know, there's a lot of different levels of people. Um, I don't really know what it was that made me have like the, if you want to think like epiphany, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this. But it just, it all felt right to me. And the more I looked into it, the, it almost the more it brought me peace, like, the more I invested into it, the more I felt I'm getting out of it. So it was kind of just a natural, like a progression. It wasn't like one week, no, I'm not interested the next week. Oh, I, I'm praying five times a day. I'm wearing a hijab, I'm eating halal, you know, like everything like this. This was a long journey. People only recognized it once I put the hijab on that, you know, nobody knew anything before that until I put the hijab on and to be honest that is the reason why I wear it because I'm proud of my faith and if I don't wear this then people don't know that I'm a Muslim because I'm white I'm English that's the reason you know people might people say to me well why do you wear your hijab you know it's because that is what I want to identify as and I, I, I'm proud of my beliefs and I want people to know, you know, if I don't wear it, people don't know that I'm part of it. I guess you've made that. I'd like the way you've read, read that quite a lot. And again, the whole idea of what you commit, you get out. And not in the sense of like investing in things because it gives the wrong tone to it. But again, you get what you put in. You know, if you read a bit of it, do this, that, and the other, you sort of, okay, you might get a bit back from that. You might get a nice quote you can put on Instagram, why not? But then you start appreciating the more, the deeper meanings behind things, appreciating the... I don't know, the layers behind it or in the application. And again, the more invested you get in it, the more you get out as a person. And it, and again, like the way you're saying about wearing the, the hijab, like obviously some of the rules is quite flexible in the sense of there's not the same sort of restrictions. But again, if you feel authentically you, you feel like Sophie Luxton wearing that hijab and everything else, you are you. If you feel almost naked without, you feel this isn't really me. I feel like I shouldn't represent myself in this way. Then who's anyone to say that, you know, you should or shouldn't do whatever else. Who are they to say anything off the bat in the first place? Yeah. Who and, are they to ask come in their podcast and ask these questions? Those <laughs> <laughs> <Those> bastards. <laughs> but it's for me, like, you know, with everything you, like I said, with everything you do in your life, you're going to have supporters, you're going to have haters. You know, I wear this. I've had people come up to me in the street. I've had, you know, I've had someone come up to me in the street that I do not know. And they go to me, are you English? And I say, yeah. So, um, are you Muslim? I say, yeah. I say, but why are you wearing that? 
I'm like, because I want to. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I forgot I left this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just turn around. I don't, even the fact, I, this is, I couldn't even believe this. I went into Asda like a week ago and I forgot to put my mask on yet. And literally, I just forgot, you know, can you believe I forgot, you know, in 2021 to put a mask on my face? But, <laughs> and, um, you know, it's hard to put the mask on. Usually I put pins on the side of my head and I put it on the pins. And the, I walked into the shop and the guy goes, oh, you need, you, can you put a mask on, please? I said, oh, sorry, I forgot. I am, you know, I might have to go back to my car. And he said, uh, no, I can give you one. So he gave me one. I said, I might need to go back to my car still because it's going to be hard to get it on my head. And he goes to me, well, just take that scarf off your head. <laughs> okay, so that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just looked at him and I was like, yeah, okay. I think I'm just going to go back to my car and, and yeah. put it on. <laughs> yeah, I might just go back to Morrison's or Asda or Tesco's or something else. You know, see you later, <laughs> But this is kind of why these conversations like this are important to highlight these things happen to a lot of people, people, I'm saying people generalizing, but again, yeah. you'll find certain people who aren't as familiar or open or even that aware of other cultures, other sort of, you know, again, again uh, you get many children like point at like turbans and stuff like this. They don't appreciate, you know, uh, it's a religious thing. I think, okay, why yeah, is he wearing the, that hat? The thing is, their intention isn't bad. Like, if a child says but, it, and but they're this genuinely is my point. just saying, what, what does the hat look, you know? It's, <laughs> That's it. But this is sort of the, I'm trying to give a benefit of the doubt that it's naivety, yeah. like innocence, but it's probably ignorance. But I don't, I, that's another conversation. I'm trying to play nice. But, <laughs> but here we are. But yeah, you know what thank, it is, though? All, all of that is worth it as soon as her one Muslim might turn around and say to like call me sister or something and I realize it's worth it because you know I'm part of this this you know the welcoming me then it becomes worth it you know 10 people could say to me why are you wearing that for one person can say to me oh like you know they'll say like oh you're a revert like mashallah you know nice and it makes it all worth it you know when just one person says that but this is sort of the point in itself and this is where the sort of love layers and sort of substance to this comes into it that it's not just about the individuals it's not just about this there's, there's so much more to it and again it's your own honesty with yourself because you represent yourself honestly there's, there's a bigger picture it's not just you in your flat in Burma now it's you on your own like personal journey albeit spiritual spirit, just call it whatever you want it's a, it's a journey in itself and wherever it takes you wherever you go again you'll be I don't know better for having that full stop yeah. regardless of anything else and then everything else is just an accessory to it it's all a, an addition it's a pat on the back for keep going again you know it full well from fight camps so the fucking thankless things you don't need the pat on the back <laughs> to say you did really well a nice fight but you know if you get it it's it's a nice little nod that you've been respected for the effort you're putting in and again I, as much as i am unaware of the intricacies of religion i'm always happy to learn i'm always happy to listen and thank you very much for your time where can people find you on social media um same as last time i'm on instagram so if you look to an mma um to be honest that's the only one i'm really using at the moment uh, i haven't got time for twitter i don't really understand it <laughs> i don't really get it either but yeah be sure to check out sophie we've got our last podcast as well that went out a little while ago it was may i think i think it's at the start um also check out fist the cuffs masks there we are da -da -da -da. for anyone listening on audio we've got them available along with the shorts um, check out our sponsors, the English Hypnotist, and obviously Fisticuffs underscore podcast for all questions, queries, anything else you want. 